Well, Joe Biden has sent a pretty strong message to his doubters, including some of his fellow Democrats. According to a letter he shared on X, he says he is firmly committed to staying in the presidential race and beating his Republican candidate, Donald Trump. That's, of course, despite concerns over his age and health, particularly since the first official debate. Joining me now is former White House Chief of Staff and now Bondi Partners consultant Mick Mulvaney. Mick, lovely to see you. Thanks for your time. Biden is not backing down. Do you think that's a selfish move? Is it in the best interest of the Democratic Party that's arguably looking pretty weak, panicked and at odds at the moment? Yeah, Holly, it's absolutely fascinating to watch. It's unlike anything I think any of us have seen in our adult lifetimes, for sure. Um, the mutiny now on the Democrat side is growing every single hour. Um, the Congress just returned to Washington, D.C. this evening, as you and I chat, and already there's another high-ranking Democrat member of the House uh, from the armed for, uh, for the for the Armed Services Committee, as a matter of fact, who's come out calling on Joe Biden to step aside as the candidate. So this is continuing to, to, to grow. I'm not sure how it stops. You ask a question, is it a selfish thing? It depends. Put yourself in Joe Biden's shoes. Everyone that seems to be around him is telling him what a great job he's doing. Um, he was asked famously last week in, in an interview um, in prime time whether or not he had even seen the debate since, since it took place. And he said that he couldn't remember and thinks that he probably did not. Um, so that's the type of insulation that is around the president right now. And if everybody's telling you you did a great job and it's no big deal, why wouldn't you continue to run for president just as Joe Biden is uh, indicating that he will? Mm, interesting that they would say he did a good job when so many people um, watching that debate, it was undeniably really awkward to watch. Um, Biden himself has admitted that it was a, quote, bad night. Um, he struggled to think on his feet unscripted. There's no doubt about that. It's left a lot of people wondering who is running the country at the moment. I mean, reports that a top specialist in Parkinson's disease has visited the White House eight times in about eight months, I think it is. Um, the White House, though, says Biden has not been treated for the disease. Uh, First Lady Jill Biden has even snapped at reporters about these continuous questions here about his health. Let's take a listen to that. What are your thoughts on that, Mick? She's coming under a great deal of scrutiny, um, a great many questions as to whether or not she's now sort of the, the man behind the curtain in the Oval Office. Um, she uh, was on stage immediately um, with her husband after the debate last week. Most of the nation saw that. What most of the nation did not see was a quick rally they went to afterwards. It was covered on some of the smaller networks here, where she essentially propped him up on stage and said, you did such a great job. You, you knew all the answers to all the questions. Isn't he doing great? We need four more years. Um, and she's coming under more and more scrutiny every single day as to whether or not she is the one who is refusing to tell Joe Biden how poorly he did in that debate and how much he is at risk. Certainly, it's a very difficult position for any family member to be in. Imagine the pressures being the first lady of the United States and having to have those conversation. But all eyes are, have really been on Jill Biden in the last week as to what she is telling uh, President Joe Biden, whether or not she is the reason that he's still in this race. What are your thoughts on the reports about a Parkinson's disease specialist visiting the White House? Yeah, that, that's fair. It's a good question. I don't worry about that one too much. I don't put much value in that. First of all, folks who are familiar with Parkinson's know that, that Joe Biden doesn't show many of the outward signs, at least of Parkinson's. And more importantly, um, the White House Medical Office serves probably five hundred people um, at any given time. Um, so it wouldn't be unusual for other folks within the White House to possibly be receiving care for Parkinson. So while it's certainly something that stands out because of the the, the context in which it's happening, my, ma my mind as a former chief of staff doesn't immediately make a, a leap from that to Joe Biden has, has Parkinson's disease. I, I, there's just too many things in between those two, uh, those two steps. Mm. And that's a really good point you make there. They could have been treating somebody else. Um, I think what's happening here is the mystery surrounding Joe Biden and sort of the rumour mill is in overdrive when it comes to his health and fitness. So um, by hearing that a specialist had visited there, of course, understandably, people are jumping to conclusions perhaps. Um, how is it that people in the US only have two options in Biden and Trump when at least 60% of Americans don't want to vote for either? 
Uh, you know, I'm not sure about that 60 percent number. Look, we both both of the parties had primaries. The Republicans had a little bit more robust primary than the Democrats did. But even the Democrats had other options. Every time folks ask me, you know, how do we end up with candidates that nobody wants? I keep asking, how do you know nobody wants them? They, they went through these primary processes. They won those primaries. Donald Trump won the nomination for the Republicans. Joe Biden won the nomination from the Democrats. I think it, it's an interesting conversation to have from an academic standpoint as to what's happening in the nation, as to why Donald Trump is still popular, why Joe Biden is still popular. Um, but this concept that we have this, this, these two candidates that nobody wants to vote for, I think, is, 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 is taken a little bit out of context. We had the debates. These are the candidates. Whether or not these remain the candidates it remains to be seen. Joe Biden, I still don't think can survive this, Holly. I think that the pushback has been, this is not a social media uprising. This is the New York Times. Mm. This is sitting senators. This is people running for office. These are large donors in the Democrat Party telling him he needs to go. I've never seen anybody come under that type of pressure and withstand it. Yes, and with, um, you know, that sort of weakness within his own party, it really doesn't look good. And as you just mentioned there, it could be hard to come back from that. I mean, we do have to wrap things up. We could keep talking about this for another hour or so, to be honest, Mick. But it could be a pretty messy week on Capitol Hill. Of course, the NATO summit is this week as well. And um, what are we likely to see there? What do you think uh, will unfold? Uh, it could be messy uh, a lot. He's going to have to, uh, Joe Biden is going to have to be make several public appearances. These are going to be substantive appearances. The focus on him is going to be incredible. Uh, there's going to be more and more announcements every single passing day from Washington with other Democrats calling for his resignation. And then again, again of course, Holly, uh, between now and, uh, and next Tuesday, we'll begin the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee. So, yeah, it could get really, really messy here going into the uh, into the midsummer. Ming Mulvaney, thank you as always. Um, lovely to chat with you. Thanks for your analysis. I'll speak with you soon. Thanks, Holly.